بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأصلي وأسلم على من بعث رحمة للعالمين صلوات الله تعالى عليه وعلى جميع النبيين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين ثم أما بعض My dearest brothers and sisters Welcome to another episode Inshallah in this episode we are going to be speaking about uh, our ambassadors of Al-Islam the future generation of Al-Islam those who are going to be a representation of Al-Islam living in Western countries. We are speaking about our youth. We are speaking about our future generation. We are speaking about our children. We are speaking about our boys and our girls. Brothers and sisters, first and foremost, it's important that we mention that our children are a great blessing from Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed us with so many bounties. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِن نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Allah Azza wa Jal reminds us that everything you have in your possession, everything that you have in your custody, this is all from Allah Azza wa Jal. From amongst the blessings that He has bestowed upon each one of us, He has given us our children. But my dearest brothers and sisters, this blessing comes with a huge responsibility, a big mas'uliyya. And this means I as a father, I as a guardian, I as a community leader, I as an imam, I as an alim, I as a teacher, whatever sector of society you may be from, <clears throat> you have a huge responsibility upon the next generation. You have a huge responsibility upon uh, the youth. You have a huge responsibility to guide them, to nurture them and to teach them. And if we fail, then we will fail a generation yet to come. We want our children to be a good representation of Al-Islam living in the United Kingdom, living in Western country. We want them to be good citizens. We want them to be good ambassadors of Allah and His Rasul. But we have to make effort. We have to try. We have to uh, spend time. We have to exhaust our effort, energy, resources in giving them a platform, a platform that, that, platform that will enable them to be ambassadors of Al-Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he nurtured the young Shabab, the young companions, the youth around him. What's interesting is the young companions that were around him, whether it's Zayd ibn Haritha, whether it's Anas ibn Malik, whether it's any other companions, Jarir ibn Abdullah, any of the other companions, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam nurtured them. Why? Because he knew that they would be the leaders of tomorrow. And the Prophet ﷺ demonstrated that the Battle of Badr, the Battle of Uhud, the Battle of Khandaq, all of those battles that took place systematically, they were led by young companions who were nurtured under the Prophet ﷺ. So our children, they are a blessing, provided that we are able to nurture them, we are able to guide them, and we are able to teach them, especially in this challenging society. They are surrounded by so much vice. They are surrounded by so much challenges. We see knife crime, we see gun crime, we see illicit relationship, immoral activity, indecent activity, immoral behavior, all of the fawahish that a person can think of. It's widely available in society and to some extent uh, many of that has become a norm that people they partake in so much fawahish and it's become second nature to them. So this is the kind of society our children are growing up in. It's important to mention that they are living in a society where there is so much opportunity. If a young man wants to excel, if a young woman wants to excel in terms of their education, in terms of their job prospect, then there is so much opportunity provided you are hungry, provided you show commitment and dedication. There are so many paths and avenues that will lead you to your desired destination. But on the contrary, it's important that we mention 
even in the midst of so much opportunity, there is a dark side, there is so much challenges. And according to some of the resources, approximately 45,000 knife crime uh, incidents took place in the United Kingdom in the year 2022. In comparison to the year 2021, that rose by 9%. So there was a 9% rise in comparison to the previous year. Think about this year. And the number that I gave you, and this is the numbers that we find according to many of the organizations that collect these numbers. They mentioned that these are the numbers that have been recorded. Think about the numbers that haven't been recorded. 45,000 knife crime incidents just in the United Kingdom. That's a huge number. If you think about the population, the overall population is 67 million in the United Kingdom. What is the number of Muslims amongst the 67 million? The Muslims, huge in number, isn't it? But we are still the minority. What are the uh, number of Bangladeshis living in the United Kingdom? Approximately far, uh, half a million or even more, 600,000, between 600,000 and 700,000 uh, Bengalis just living in the United Kingdom. Amongst them, the majority are living in London. A recent uh, number that came out approximately 120,000 plus Muslims living just in Tower Hamlets. That's a huge number and many of them are young people. So we have a responsibility to guide them, to teach them, to make them good Muslims, a good representation of Al-Islam. And if we fail our children, then we will fail a generation yet to come. Many of them, they will lose their faith. Many of them, they will be Muslim by name but they will not have any Muslim Islamic identity. They will not come to the masjid. They will not pray. They will have no association, attachment to Al-Islam because we failed them. So as a father, as a mother, it's important that we really, really focus and emphasize on this topic, the responsibility of a father, the responsibility of a mother, the responsibility of a guardian towards their children. And if we fail them, we will fail our own children, our grandchildren, and our children that are yet to come in our family line, our family lineage. Take a moment and think. If you did not fulfill your responsibility as a father, if you did not fulfill your responsibility as a mother, you didn't give your children Islamic knowledge, you didn't teach them about Allah and His Rasul, you didn't teach them about Tawheed, the oneness of Allah and the Sunnah of His Habib, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have failed your children. Your children will become half Muslim. When they get married, your children get married, and they have children, your grandchildren, they're going to be quarter Muslim. And when your grandchildren get married, and you've already departed from this dunya, and your grandchildren get married, when they have children, they're going to be zero Muslim. And then when they have children, it may be the case that they have no attachment to al-Islam. They become people of no faith. They become people who consider different walks of life either than Al-Islam. That is loss. That is a shame for you that you as a father, as a man, the primary bread finder of the family, you could not fulfill your responsibility. You as a mother, the responsible one, the woman who should have taken care of the children and most importantly place the seed of Iman in the hearts of the children, you failed your children. And today you have to face the consequences. Because of your actions, your family, your children and their children, they lost their faith because of you. We want our children to be the reason that we enter Jannah. We don't want our children to be the reason that we enter Jahannam. The Prophet ﷺ, he says in this beautiful hadith, a man will enter Jannah and then he will be elevated. He would be given a higher position in Jannah. And then the man will say, after he is given this VIP service, he's already entered Jannah. He's already in Jannah. He has been elevated. He's given the VIP access, an extra bonus when he enters Jannah. And he would say, Ya Allah, anna hadha, wa fi rawayatin anna li hadha, this is for me? What have I done to deserve this? You've given me Jannah, alhamdulillah, I'm happy. But all of a sudden you've elevated me. What is the reason? 
Then it will be said to him, بِإِسْتِغْفَارِي وَلَدِكَ لَكَ Your children are making dua for you. Subhanallah bihamdi. This hadith illustrates to us, brothers and sisters, that our children are the reason we will enter Jannah, we will be elevated in Jannah. But what we need to worry about is when our children will become the reason we enter Jahannam. May Allah Azza wa Jal protect us. Na'udhu billahi min thalik. That I gave birth as a mother and as a father, they are my children. And because of my children, I entered Jahannam. What a loss. Khasirat dunya wal akhirah. Thalika huwa al khusranul mubin. This is loss in this dunya and in the akhirah. That is the gravest of loss. That you couldn't enter Jannah because of your children. If we leave behind good children, وَوَلَدٍ صَالِحٍ يَدْعُوا لَهُ Good children who make dua for you, they could be the reason you enter Jannah. But on the contrary, وَبِالْعَقْسِ Your children could be the reason you enter Jahannam. On the day of Hisab, many children will say, Ya Allah, bring my parents so I can step on their heads today. They didn't give me Islamic teaching. They didn't give me the knowledge I needed in order to recognize the oneness of Allah. Tawheed al-Rububiyya, Tawheed al-Uluhiyya, Tawheed al-Asma wa-Sifat, the oneness of Allah, why we worship Him, why we serve Allah Azza wa Jal, why we enslave ourselves before Allah Azza wa Jal, why we have to be obedient to Allah, what is the purpose behind ibadah, what is the maqasid of ibadah, the objectives behind ibadah, what is Jannah, what is Jahannam, what is Qadr, what is Yawmul Qiyamah, they didn't give me any of that knowledge. All they were concerned about is financial security. They left behind a beautiful house for me. They left behind lots of money in the bank. They left behind lots of wealth, lots of cars, and all of the beauty in this dunya, but they didn't leave behind religious security. They gave me financial security, but they didn't give me religious security. Ya Allah, bring my parents. Today let me step over their heads. Na'udhu billahi min thalik. We don't want to be in that position, my dear brothers and sisters. We want our children to be the reason we enter Jannah. Look at Ibrahim alayhi salam. He is known as Khalilullah, the friend of Allah Azza wa Jal. Abu al-Anbiya Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah Azza wa Jal, he tested Ibrahim alayhi salam with many, many, many tests. And, in, in, and then Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, Inna kathalika najzil muhsinin. And this is how we reward the good doers. How did Allah reward Ibrahim alayhi salam? after all of the test tribulation that he went through when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the prophets were the people that were tested the most ashaddu nasi balaan al anbiya ibrahim alayhi salam was amongst those who was tested the most but every time he was tested he showed diligence perseverance reliance upon allah absolute patience and allah azza wa jal says inna kadhalika najzi al muhsinin and this is how we reward the good doers allah preserved the Sunnah of Ibrahim alayhi salam. When you go to Hajj, it reminds you of Ibrahim alayhi salam. When you go to Umrah and you do Tawaf, it reminds you of Ibrahim alayhi salam. When you drink Zamzam, the story is connected to Ibrahim alayhi salam. When we do Udhiyya, the sacrifice is connected to Ibrahim alayhi salam. When the young boy gets circumcision, Khatna, it reminds us of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Most of those beautiful ibadat are connected to Ibrahim alayhi salam. Why? Allah Azza wa Jalla, he says, وَإِذْ ابْتَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُنْ Allah Azza wa Jalla, he tested Ibrahim alayhi salam, many tests, فَأَتَمَّهُنْ He was able to fulfill and complete those tests. Allah Azza wa Jalla, to reward him, he says, إِنِّي جَاعِلُكَ لِلنَّاسِ إِمَامَةً We made you the imam for the people. What's interesting, brothers and sisters, is look at the response of Ibrahim alayhi salam. After he is given the medal of honor, after going through hardship upon hardship, mushakka, ba'da mushakkatin, hardship after hardship, he is given the medal of honor. Allah says, Inni ja'iluka lin nasi imama. We have made you the imam of all of the people. Look at his response. At that moment, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he could have said anything. Ya Rabb, do I deserve this? Why have you given me this? Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. He didn't say anything. The very first thing he says, qala wa min dhurriyyati. Ya Allah, what about my children? Subhanallah wa bihamdi. How much concern our father Ibrahim alayhi salam had for each one of us. In the Arabic language, dhurriyya means qarnan ba'da qarnin. 
generation after generation fi kulli asarin wa amsarin in different parts of the world and different time periods if ibrahim alayhi salam he said wa min abnai ya allah what about my son ishaq and ismail alayhi salam alayhi salam he didn't say that he says wa min dhurriyyati what about all of the people that will come after me generation after generation subhanallah how much concern ibrahim alayhi salam had for his children meaning all of the people that have come and they will come until the day of hisab my brothers and sisters this is a lesson for us it illustrates and it portrays a very important lesson that we have to have concern regarding our children if not they will become people of no faith they will be those that leave al-islam they have no attachment to al-islam ibrahim alayhi salam he makes lots of dua rabbi ja'alni muqim as-salati wa min dhurriyyati rabbana wa taqabbal dua after that he makes lots of dua oh allah make my children make my people amongst those who prostrate to you who worship you who enslave themselves to you this is the dua that he made so brothers and sisters from this incident connected to Ibrahim alayhi salam there are many many fawaid that can be taken out many of the scholars istikhraj they took out much fawaid just from the incident of Ibrahim alayhi salam and the skills of parenting the need for us to guide our children support them nurture them and this begins by making lots of dua if you do a hundred tons of a'mal good deeds you need to do a thousand tons of dua for your children more dua for your children why inna dua yanfa'u mimma nazala aw mimma lam yanzil the prophet ﷺ says dua can change your destiny if your child is troubling you if your child is not listening to you make lots of dua to allah azza wa jal to guide them to support them to help them our children they are living in a society where there is so much challenge there is so much challenges that they are facing from the primary socialization as a young child going to school whether it's primary whether it's secondary whether it's college or whether it's university so many challenges that they are facing uh, we have to ensure that we give them the resources the equipment that they need so that they are ready for life and the most important quality that we need to give them is we need to uh, lay down the seed of al islam within them we need to place the seed of islam within their hearts from their primary socialization this means from their young age from an age where they are uh, not self sufficient they are dependent on others they learn through observation they look at their mother and father and they learn from their mother and father so if we are not guiding our children from that age then we are going to have to suffer how many parents how many mothers and fathers are suffering today they wasn't present in their child's life before and all of a sudden now the child doesn't listen when the child becomes 18 when they become 17 when they are 19 20 they don't listen but it's your fault you wasn't present in their life they needed your love comfort they needed your affection they needed your time you didn't give them that all you gave them was money 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 and this is what you thought was going to bring about happiness but you didn't give them islam how unfortunate it is that many times we see a father pass away the son doesn't even know how to do janaza the son doesn't even know one dua the daughter doesn't know how to make dua the family members don't know how to make dua you've left behind millions of pounds but you haven't left behind the real wealth and that is al-islam you are a big loser in this dunya and a big loser in the hereafter spend your money on your children to guide them to support them to give them islamic teachings so that they become good muslims they have good morals they have good code of conduct they have good ethics they have good mannerism they have good qualities they have good uh, attributes they have good characteristics so that they are a representation of islam and they are a good representation of your family they will make lots of dua for you so the mother and father if you fail your children then it is your fault it is your fault ibn al-qayyim he says if the son or daughter becomes disobedient there is no one to blame except the children a man came to ali radiallahu anhu and he says my son doesn't listen to me he's become disobedient so ali radiallahu anhu this companion he says to him how did you treat your son when he was young and in response he says kuntu uhminuhu i used to neglect him ali radiallahu anhu this is a man of knowledge and wisdom he says in response well what do you expect what do you expect 
you didn't give time affection you didn't give support you didn't guide and teach your son or your daughter at an age where they were not self-sufficient they were like an uncultivated land ready to be cultivated they were waiting for your support but you was too busy many of us we are working all night uber boat we don't have time for our children when we come home we're sleeping our children have gone to school no connection no connection whatsoever our children are detached from us you can't expect your children to become awliya allah the friends of allah min as salihin you can't expect your daughters to become um, of, of the qanitat salihat you can't be, expect your child to become uh, amongst the mukhlisin the salihin how you're not giving time you're not investing in your children if you did a business and you want the business to prosper what would you do you would invest your energy your time and your effort and you would take every route possible for you to become successful your family needs your support your children need your support they need your time and affection especially in this society and if you fail your children you are failing not just your own children but the ummah of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so as a father be a role model as a mother be a role model do not lie in front of your children children learn through observation in behavioral studies in psychology they say behavior breeds behavior listen to this point again behavior breeds behavior if you lie your young son or daughter will see this and they will observe and they will take this trait they will take this quality but if you're honest they will take this quality if you give salam when you enter the house as a mother and father your children will learn through observation and if you are honest in your business and your transaction if you are kind and compassionate to others if you are a person who is generous if you are a person who has good quality and characteristic your children will learn through observation so it's important as parents that we display role model behavior towards our children from a very young age so that they learn through observation Another point that I wanted to mention brothers and sisters let us go easy on our children let us befriend our children let us consider them to be those who are very close to us be open and have nice conversations with your children spend time with them take them out befriend them and establish this relationship why am i saying this because if you don't they are going to the outside world they will find love and affection somewhere else and it may be the case that people divert them towards haram immorality and decency all because you didn't befriend your children you didn't nurture them support them and give them proper care and affection so you will fail your children so brothers and sisters be a role model to your children don't lie be honest as a husband and wife do not argue in front of your children do not cheat do not defraud be honest show role model behavior be kind to your children be compassionate to your children and invest your money in their education make them good muslims in this society especially when it comes to islamic education invest your money and you will see the fruits in the hereafter bismillah ta'ala may allah azza wa jalla make our children pious may allah makes them make them amongst the salihin may allah make our children the reason we enter jannah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of us and give us the tawfiq to fulfill our responsibility that Allah has given to each one of us on our shoulder may Allah azza wa jalla accept all that we have said and give us the tawfiq to implement everything that we have heard bi idnillahi azza wa jalla wa sallallahu ta'ala ala nabiyyina muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam insha'allah we will see you in our next episode assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh